All right, we're back with another episode of Coffee with Ken. Hope you're enjoying the videos. I'm loving the, uh, the podcast setup. It's a little bit more relaxed. I'm gonna be back at my desk and doing some more informative videos, things like market updates, uh, and specifically videos for our clients. But uh, I love this format and I really hope that, that you do too. Have a crazy one today. Uh, I'm a researcher. I love to uh, scour the internet for really cool stories, things that can relate to uh, to you, to my clients, to me. Really, just uh, anything that is real estate related. And this is something that is kind of crazy. Celebrity net worth, CelebrityNetWorth.com posted an article about a week ago that uh, has kind of been. It's a really bizarre story, and I want to take you on the roller coaster. That is the story. So there was a piece of uh, land for sale, privately owned. It was for sale for $1 billion with a B. You're right. I didn't say million. I said billion, okay? What happened is crazy. All right, so have you heard of the company Herbalife? This is like an MLM door-to-door sales company that sells basically vitamins and stuff. I don't know exactly what they sell today. They're a publicly traded company. Mark Hughes was the owner. Mark passed away in 2000, the year 2000. Um, and But over the course of his life, uh, once he started Herbalife and, and made his riches, he had a crazy, crazy life. Uh, Celebrity Net Worth actually did an article on him as well. I'll post both uh, articles, the links to them, in the description below. So Mark uh, had, had something, uh, a passion for real estate. And it was crazy because uh, this parcel of real estate was originally known as the Vineland and then uh, became known as the Mountain of Beverly Hills. It has a crazy story. So it's literally 10 minutes from Rodeo Drive. It's 157 acres. It's massive. Put that in perspective, Disneyland is 85 or 87 acres. So this is almost double the size of Disneyland. People like Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, and other famous celebrities have tried to buy it unsuccessfully. A famous celebrity that you may have heard of, Merv Griffin, who's a television producer, I believe, has since passed away, uh, was one of the celebrity owners. He bought it off of an Iranian princess, of all people. Crazy. Anyways, uh, Merv ended up wanting to build something bigger than the largest home in America, which was, uh, if you know Tori Sp- uh, Spelling, the Spelling, ma- uh, Aaron Spelling, the Spelling Mansion, it was massive. I think it was like 50 some odd thousand square feet. He wanted to build something like 56 or 57 thousand square feet. It's crazy. That was crazy. Uh, City of Beverly Hills would not let him build it. And this is all from reading this article. So if there's anything factually incorrect, I apologize. Uh, City of Beverly Hills just said, no, it's not happening. So Merv couldn't um, put put this deal together. He couldn't. He, so he bought this land, uh, which we don't know the sale price of. And then he said, you know what? It's time to move on. So Mark Hughes comes along just like, oh, hey, look at that piece of land. I think I'd like to buy it. I made a lot of money selling vitamins. How much do you want for it? So I think Merv ended up selling it to him uh, for 23 or 24 million bucks or something like that. No, Merv ended up selling it to him for, um, what was the number here? I think it was about $12 million, okay? He sold that uh, back in 1997, I've got the number here, for about eight and a half million bucks. Okay, so 97, and then it's a Mark Hughes. Mark Hughes dies in 2000. So it goes from an Iranian princess to Merv Griffin to Mark Hughes, and then Mark Hughes dies pretty much like a couple years after buying. So there's a bunch of stuff with Mark Hughes. Crazy life, like I said before. His son, I believe in 2000, was like eight or nine inherits this stuff okay so son sitting on this property eight years old can't touch it till 35 according to the trustee rules and regs 
And so the people in charge, they end up selling it to someone named Charles Dickens. Now, this Charles Dickens character has no money. How they ended up picking this guy, and they, so they sold the property for 23, almost 24 million dollars. They had offers for 40 million from credited buyers, and they sold it for 23.75 million to a guy that had no money. This guy had nothing to the point of he actually went to the trustee and said, by the way, the deposit I got to put down on the property, can you loan that to me? And the trustee said, yeah, we'll loan it to you. I mean, this is only in Hollywood, right? This is only something that could happen and be written into a Hollywood movie. So Dickens couldn't put anything together, couldn't put anything together, finally went back to the trustee and said, by the way, if you want me to build something and, and get out of this, you need to lend me some more money. Like, so the trustee says, no problem. How much do you need? Dickens ran through 200 million of the trustee's money. Like, 200 million. This is insanity. So, 2018 Dickens, this Charles Dickens character, has borrowed $200 million against the property transfers ownership to someone called Victor Noval. His dad is a convicted tax fraudster. A lot of shady stuff going on here. So, 2018 comes, Victor then lists the land for $400 million. Sorry, for $1 billion. Gets an offer for $400 million and turns it down. So he would have not only paid out the 200 million, he would have pocketed 200 million. Now I don't know the property taxes and when you sell something there in California, what is involved in taxes fees on. But let's just say he would have put 150 million minimum in his pocket. They turn it down. Well, then they reduced the price from a billion to 650. It just kept coming down. And then the taxes, the property taxes, everything else started accumulating. And so the Alex Hughes Trust, Mark Hughes' son, ended up foreclosing on the property. Now, they own the land and they've got a $200 million note loan out to Charles Dickens, who's now transferred that loan over to Victor Noval. Now, I don't know if the loan transferred or if it was just the title, I'm assuming when they transferred title, the loan kind of went with it, but I could be wrong on that. What a crazy story. So it went from being listed for a billion dollars. The Hughes Foundation put in uh, foreclosed. That means it goes to auction in the United States. They go to auction and it sells for $100,000 back to the trust. If someone would have spent a billion dollars, they would have been levied a $10 million a year tax bill, property tax bill from the state of California. You would have to make $20 million to pay your $10 million tax bill. Just a tax bill. It's insane. I'm like just as confused as you are. Point is, there's a lot of craziness that happened with this trust. A lot of craziness that happened with this property. And you don't see stories like this every single day. Man, oh man. What? in the world <laughs> will we see next. Hope you have a great day. If you're thinking about making a move, let's make it a lot simpler. Soul at KenParkin.com, www.KenParkin.com. I would love to chat with you. Go out and have yourself an amazing day.